I was going to bring you a message on the harvest, but I think it's more important right now in this season for us to hear this. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, the shofars are blowing every day in Israel. Uh, they're blowing them every day. Uh, and so it's not a coincidence that we heard the, the shofar uh, last uh, couple of weeks in Fort Worth. And we woke up to that and, and uh, we knew that's something God was doing. That's when we thought, wow, that's the way it's going to be when the rapture comes. And little did we know about the, the month of Elul. Of course, we're not Jewish, so we don't understand uh, the, the, the Jewish calendars in a sense. And so uh, we started studying that to find out what it really means. Um, and so anyway, the important thing about that is, is it, it's getting our hearts right before God. Um, it's amazing that Elu happened the, in the same week of the, of the solar eclipse. According to the rabbis, a solar eclipse is a, is a wake-up call to a nation for judgment. And so that we have to understand that that is a wake-up call. People say, well, what did you think about the solar? I said, well, it's an awe. It's a, it's a significance, a sign of God. That's all it is. And so uh, if you remember when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible said it was dark for many hours. And it was an eclipse that happened, a total solar eclipse that happened that day. Uh, it's because people came against Jesus and the power that was at that moment was God turned his moment, his, his face from Jesus because of the sin. And so that's when uh, the solar came in. So the, the, the darkness came. So we have to understand that's a judgment right there. So we have to understand that. I take it very serious. Uh, it is not just a, uh, an excitement that happened only every hundred years. And I take it seriously because of the days that we live. And so the month of Elul is the Jewish today are spending more time in their, in their synagogues. They're studying more of the word of God. They're searching their hearts. They're, they're in more. It's an introspection. Two things are happening. It's an introspection of their heart. And also it's an inspection of what they've been doing. Remember uh, we opened up a couple Sundays ago about how Joshua inspected the seeds that he sowed throughout the land, throughout all of Egypt. He was inspecting the seeds, and this is exactly what happened. Now, uh, let's, let's, look at, let's look at the Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, uh, l- I'm just going to, uh, uh, you know, put aside that because I felt after prayer today, um, after praying today, you know, church, uh, we're going somewhere and, and understand that the devil doesn't like where we're going, so he'll do everything he can. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And I want everybody to listen through through the heart of God, through the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not a time to sit back and uh, consider the options that you have before. There is only one option, that's Jesus Christ. And we can't take it for granted that Wednesday is not important. We can't take it for granted. This is where Jesus comes and ministers to us. If we uh, think that this is just another social visit, you're missing the whole point. Of the purpose of Wednesday. This is where the Lord speaks to us. So what happens. You're building up other things. Other than worship. Now notice this. If you're building other things. Other than worship. For not being in the house of God on Wednesday. Then you're setting up yourself for a fall. Satan comes very disguised. Very deceiving. And if he can take the word from you. Which he's done already. If a person's missing the word of that day. Then Satan sets that person up. To open And that door opens up for more to come. So you have to understand something. Every time you're in the house of God, in the place that God's called you to receive from the Lord, He's speaking to you. So Wednesday is not just Wednesday. Wednesday is where we come to the throne of God. And so understand that. Now, parents, I want you to understand something. I know school is, is here. Don't subjugate yourself or your children because of school. You get them in the house of God. Pastor, you don't understand. No, I, I've had three children and I know what I'm talking about. You get them in the house of God. There is nothing more important than them being in the house of God than them doing their homework at home. Come on, church. You know what I'm saying? Come on, say amen. amen. Come on, I'm speaking some truth here. Say amen. amen. And so we have to understand that. Take it seriously now. And I'm speaking to a lot of parents and, and I notice that there's no children here but a few. Understand this. You're not doing a benefit for keeping your children at home or the family at home. You're actually opening yourself up. The Bible says that you will sow, reap what you sow. And so we have to take that for granted. Now notice this, everybody likes to talk about harvest finances and money coming in, monkey, but they don't want to hear the truth about sowing seeds of spirituality in their life. Amen. Can you say amen? Say with me, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to see something. Go with me to Exodus. 
And I'm your pastor and I can speak that way. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. And if you don't like it, then you go with God. You tell God, God, I don't like the pastor. And he'll get you right. He'll set you straight. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. And notice what it says here. Uh, in Exodus, the 24th chapter, uh, the, the, the root of Elul is when the children of Israel were in the wilderness. This is the root of Elul. This is where Elul was birthed, where the children of Israel were in the, in the, in the desert. You remember the story that Moses went up to the mountain. He spent some time in the mountain and he got the word of the Lord. He came down, he found, he found Aaron and his leadership and all the people dancing before a golden calf. An idol before the Lord. So what did Moses do? Tell me, what did Moses do? He broke, he broke the commandments. What did he do? He went back up to the mountain. And notice, says, why, did he break the, why, did he, why did he break the word? Because the people didn't want to receive the word. They already had set up themselves for another God. Now this is what happens in, in the month of Elul. We have to remember the word of the Lord. This is where it derived, coming from Egypt, when uh, Sinai, when Moses came off the mountain. Now notice this. What happened the second time? Moses went back up to the mountain, right? And uh, God literally wanted to destroy Israel, the, the Jewish people. But it was Moses that stood in the gap. And then again, the word of the Lord came. And notice this, notice this, the word of the Lord comes. But I want you to see something. By this time, they understood. Now notice what it says in, in Exodus, the 24th chapter. The Bible says in the 27th chapter, uh, the 24th chapter, excuse me. Uh, the Bible says, hallelujah, hallelujah. In verses, in verses 12, and the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and a commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. Moses rose up and he, his minister Joshua and Moses went up to the mountain of God and he said, Unto the elders, tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matter to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went unto the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. Verse 16. And the glory of the Lord abode upon, excuse me, upon the mount of Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called unto the Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now notice as we understand something, this where... This is where the word of the Lord was given to Moses. And that's why we today are celebrating his word. And that's where we see the, the, the very thread of Jesus Christ in that word. The very thread of Jesus in that word. Now understand something. Uh, the month of Elul is a time where the Jewish people have to get back into that word. And it is nothing but the word that enlightens them to understand where they were. So in other words, they look they look into their heart by the word where they've been. Now notice this. It doesn't matter if it's just uh, uh, something they do every year. But the thing, the point that I'm trying to make is they put the word in them. And the word shows them. That's what God wants them. Now notice this. Who's the word today? Who's the word today? Jesus is the word today. We receive him. We come into, he comes into our life. We get into that word. We see Jesus. He reflects his glory in us. So we understand the glory of the Lord. We start to change from the inside out. Hallelujah. Amen. We're people of the inside and we work outside. Amen. So in other words, Jesus is working in us. So notice this. The trumpet blows every day to call the children of Israel to search their hearts. Where is the trumpet calling in your life today? If, if we're so busy with things in our life. Now listen to what I'm saying. If we're so busy with things in our life, and you have to understand something, you get busy. You get busy with things in your life. And if things are so complicated in your life, you're not going to hear the beckoning call of the Lord. Now notice this. If you can hear the beckoning call of the Lord now, now listen folks, if you cannot hear the beckoning call of the Lord now, then chances are you're going to miss the rapture. Because see, the rapture now is a call for heaven. Now notice this. If we can't hear the call for us now, that's why it's so important for us to stay focused. The devil hates the church. The devil doesn't love the things of Christ. He hates the church. That's why Wednesday and Sunday is the only time that, that we have church, particularly we have church. Oh my God, we don't even have it Sunday night. We don't even have it Tuesday. We don't have Tuesday prayer meeting. We don't have Thursday celebration of men with... 
uh, have a celebration of men and have a celebration of women. Listen, that, that should be already in our hearts. Pastor, when we're going to have a men's meeting, when we're going to have a women's meeting, when we're going to get together and pray, when we're going to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's not, the, that's not the case for some reason. There's no excitement in that area. It's not, there's no excitement in coming to the house of God on Wednesday. There's no excitement in coming to the house on Sunday. Why? Because see, the Satan knows that if he can remove the illul from you, you'll not hear the beckoning call of God. I want you to start searching your hearts today. This is the first day of Elul that in 40 days. Now remember, the end, the end of 40 days comes Rosh Hashanah. We, uh, we find, well, the young, yeah, Rosh Hashanah, we, the, the new year where everything starts new. The new year, it, the Jewish set their calendar by the full moon. What happened this Tuesday? We had what? The moon cover the sun. Notice this, now notice that's symbolic to you and me today. That's symbolic to you. That means Jesus is getting our attention. He's waking us up, the church. Church, get, a, get excited about Jesus. Get in the house. Come on, you can't, you can't allow the world to dictate how you're, you're going to do things. You can't allow the world. Listen, if you're allowing the world to dictate your worship, something is wrong with your salvation. Come on, church. We have to break through from that and say, no, I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to worship Jesus Christ. This is what the Lord's been telling us for months and months and months. Give the Lord a praise if you believe that. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what he's been speaking to us, but we're sleeping, we're ignoring it. We're ignoring the beckoning call of God. How much is more does the church need to wake up? How much more does the church need to wake up? You see what I'm saying? And listen, as your pastor, I am speaking the loudest I can for you guys. And, and, and listen, I'm talking about you guys, you guys, my, this sheepfold. I'm talking to you, this sheepfold. Listen, this sheep. I'm not talking about anybody else's sheepfold. I'm talking about this sheepfold. If there is rebellion in you from listening to your pastor, how are you going to listen to God when he speaks to you? Hallelujah. If you can't listen to your pastor, if you think your pastor is just a man, you're, 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 you're faking yourself. You're fooling yourself. You've got to realize that God has given your pastor to teach you, to teach you the word of God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Don't get familiar in the house of God. Come on church don't get familiar come to the house of god and say we're worshiping jesus hallelujah amen you're going to be so excited when you get to heaven come on church hallelujah amen now notice this we have to understand this the glory comes when you and i focus in on more of god that's when the glory comes and i'm telling you in this house and those that are watching you need the glory more than ever you need the glory more than ever those that are here and those that are watching, you need the anointing more. I'm calling. I'm blowing the show for right now. I'm saying repent. Get your hearts right with Jesus. Get your hearts right with Jesus. Get it right and start worshiping Jesus. And listen to the word of God. Get away from that attitude that well, I don't need anybody to tell me anything. No, you need someone to tell you something because God can't sp is not speaking to you because you can't hear him. Hallelujah. Come on, church. So we have to get this. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to see something now, the glory. Go with me to, let's look at Corinthians now. Let's, let's look at something here. I'm being led by the Spirit now. I, I, I put aside that harvest thing. And listen, I was going to talk about the seeds, your harvest, calling your harvest. But I'm telling you, this is, this, is, this is something that we have to see more. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Say with me, I thank you, Lord, for the word of God. I thank you for the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to listen to me. Go with me to 1 Corinthians now. The 11th chapter. Boy, do we need more of the glory of God. Every one of you in this room needs more of the glory of God. Those that are watching need the glory of God. You need a miracle. You need a miracle. In this house, you need miracles. You got to wake up to this. You need miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. You need the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And notice what it says here. Now, in this particular chapter, picking up in verse 24, we see this at communion. And when he break, he had given thanks and he break it and said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you this too in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup when he had supped, saying the cup, this cup is a new testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and show and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. And notice this, notice this, notice this. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. 
But let a man examine himself. Let a man examine himself. So let him eat of this cup, of that bread and drink of that. For he that eateth and drinketh on the worldly, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, sickly among you, and sleep early, which means they die. They, they physically die. Now notice this. We know that this speaks about the Lord's body as we partake of it. We, do, we took it Sunday. But you've got to understand something. The physical body, which is in Jesus, seated at the right hand of the Father, that's that physical body. The spiritual body is in us. We are the body of Christ. So I mean, we are the body of Christ. So in other words, when we don't understand and discern the body of Christ, and notice this, if you don't discern the body, now notice this, well, Pastor, I discern Jesus. If you don't discern the body, you don't discern Jesus. See, the body is Jesus. In this house, we are the body. You're the body. We're the body. We're the body. That means we have to discern this body. We have to understand this body. This body. This body is the body of Jesus. This is where people don't see the importance of church. They don't see themselves in the body. They don't see themselves in the body of Jesus Christ. So they're not discerning it. They're not thinking about it. They got other things thinking. That's why they're having issues in their life. That's why the Bible says many get sick, die early. There are a lot of people that die too early because they didn't discern the body of Jesus Christ. There's too many people. Come on, church. Amen. So we have to discern the body. Look at it again. It says this, but let a man, verse 28, but let a man, neuter gender, examine himself. Let him examine himself. Examine himself. What, how is he supposed to examine himself? Let him discern the body, verses 29. Let him examine himself and discern the body. Where are you in the body of Christ? Are you hindering the body? Are you blessing the body? Are you building the body? Are you breaking the body? Are you separating the body? Are you hurting the body? Are you not listening to the word of God in the body? Are you speaking against the pastors in the body? Are you just speaking ill against the church? You see, you, you, see, you don't understand there's more to just this building. It's discerning the body of Jesus Christ. That word examine himself, that's what we're doing now. The, the, the day of Elul, which started today. It started today that we have to examine ourselves, examine ourselves where you are in the body of Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? You have to examine yourself. Many times we don't want to get involved in the body because we, we, we don't want to. Many of us don't even want to go to a body. There's people that want to, don't want to join a church's body. There's many that don't want to listen to the pastor's uh, speaking about the body. You see what I'm saying? So what happens? They're not discerning the body. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm encouraging you. Listen, it's just, just get the fire of the Holy Ghost on you. Get a surge of the Holy Ghost on you today. Let it so birth in you to discern the body of Jesus Christ. You discern that when, when, when you're going to the house, I'm going to fulfill my part in the body of Jesus. I'm coming to discern my, uh, be part of the body. I'm bringing my children to the body of Jesus. I'm bringing my worship to the body of Jesus. I'm bringing my attitude to the body of Jesus. See, this is what it's about. If we don't have this discernment, then we are spiritually dying. We're dying because, see, the Bible says we're not discerning it. So what happens when you spiritual die of your body? And you start physically dying in your body. Now, don't tell me about heaven now. Don't tell me about, well, Pastor, I'm going to be in heaven. Listen, if you don't discern the body while you're on earth, how will you get to heaven when there is the real body together coming together? Come on, church, amen. That's why heaven right now is earth. The church is actually a representation of what heaven's going to be like. 
The church is a representation that by faith we come to worship. We, we don't see Jesus physically, but we believe in him. We feel him. We sense him. And we're not moved by feelings, but we believe him by faith. So we come to the church of Jesus Christ and we have a member. We have a, a God bless you, sister. Uh, God bless you, sister. What happens? What are we doing? We're discerning the body. We're discerning Jesus. Jesus. You're part of the body of Jesus. But when we don't discern one another, we're not subjugating ourselves to the love of the body which is Jesus Christ you see what I'm saying church and notice what it says here I want you to see something I want you to see something verses verses 29 for he that eateth and drinketh see see yes it's true about holy communion that we take it but notice this he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth drinketh damnation to us not discerning the Lord's body can you see that for this cause many are asleep many are weak and die now notice verse 31 i want you to see verse 31 now this is this is why elu is so important see god knew what he was doing when he came off that mountain he knew why the, now the jewish we understand why the jewish do this uh, that's that's what they were taught and we the american church uh, the born again believers of jesus that have it so beautiful have so much blessing we take advantage of worshiping jesus we take advantage of worship in Jesus. Well, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Hey, you're going to wake up to a sad decision one day and realize you did not make heaven. You see what I'm saying, church? Listen, that's why the Bible is so serious about Elu. So if they're serious about Elu and we're part of that branch, why can't we examine ourselves today in the house of God? I sent out a text and I said, I want everybody here early to pray. Everybody here early to pray. We need to pray for our building. We need to pray for our direction. We need to pray. Listen, there, there's, there's a building already waiting for us. It, it, there's a building waiting for us. But I'm telling you, listen to this. Listen, if we're not going to come to pray, to pray for what the pastor's requested, then how are we going to move into that? How are we going to move into that? Well, Pastor, I work. Well, you've got to do something about that. Huh? Come on, church. Amen. You've got to do something about it. Well, my children are tired. Well, do something about that. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not going to be in church. No, do something about that. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, when my pastor called me to pray at 530, and I did it for almost five years, I didn't question it. I said, yes, sir, I will be there. It was hard, but I was there. But the blessing had an overflow to this day, the full overflow of obedience to the man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what's beautiful. You can sleep better knowing that you love the man of God and you did the work of the man of God. Come on, church. See, that's accounted for your righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. And today, no one wants to listen to the pastor. You know, I sent out so many texts about get here early, get here early, get here to pray, get here to pray. No one's listening. No one's listening, hallelujah, amen. And the ones that do come to pray, they're focusing on something else, if I might say. Come on, church, amen. And you know what I'm talking about? Let me just say something. When we come to prayer, there's one person leading prayer, leading by the Holy Ghost. We need to stand behind that person and fire away. Don't you daydream. Don't you do your Bible study right now. Don't you do your prayer. Don't you go to the bathroom. You be in prayer, hallelujah. Come on, church, amen. You, you get up early to pray at home. You get early to read the Bible at home. But you get in the house of God and you pray and say, we're tearing down strongholds in the name of Jesus. Come on, church, amen. That's why we're going. There's a church waiting for us, hallelujah, amen. But we got to pray. We got to pray, we got to pray, we got to pray, we got to pray, amen. And we got to pray, but we got to do something about it. We got to trust God. And as a family, as a body, hallelujah, amen. You can see, God wants to do more in our lives. It's not about your personal lives, your jobs and your personal houses and you four no more. It's about the body of Jesus Christ. Come on, church, we got to wake up. Come on, tell me amen, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. And notice what it says here. Verses 31. Oh, ridi For if we judge ourselves... We shall not be judged. See, we're forgetting this. Judge yourself like the illegal starts tonight. Judge yourself. Where am I in the body? Am I just patty caking in the body? Am I just faking it? You're not faking it. You're not faking it. The day will declare. So you got to get real, church. Come on, church. Let's quit faking it. If we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chasing of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. You know that word chasing means? God will wake you up. God will wake you up. And you know what that means, chastening. You'll be woken up and you'll say, oh, this shouldn't have happened. 
No, it shouldn't have happened, but that's a chastening in a sense. That it's waking you up to reality. This is reality. The devil comes to all together, kill, steal, and to destroy. What is his purpose? To kill you. What is his purpose? To steal from you. So what is he doing? He's first of all looking at a way to pull the word from you so that he can steal the word out of you because his desire is to kill you. If he could take the word out of you, like come into the house of God on Wednesday. Come into the house of God when your pastor calls you. Listen, if he could take that word out of you, then you're setting yourself up for a fall. And that's where it says there. So if you could just judge yourself. Father, I'm honest today. This is the, this is the beginning of Eliu. I judge myself by the word of the Lord. Where, I discern my body. I discern myself. Where am I in the body? Am I hurting the body? And I'm destroying the body? Am I blessing the body? Am I standing in the way of the body? Am I just causing just a, just a headache to the body? I, I, am, I just, uh, am I just, you know what I'm talking about? You've got to do it, church, so that you can move into that realm with the body together. Come on, church. Amen. I want you to see something now. Verses, uh, chapter 12 now. I notice this. This is the benefits of the body. Now concerning spiritual gifts, church, brother in church. I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. He's reminding us where we were. Let me just say something. Dumb idols need not to be in a Christian's life. Dumb idols need not to be in a Christian's life. Even as you were led. Wherefore I give unto you understanding that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now notice this. No one can say Jesus Christ is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Look at that word. Jesus Christ is Lord. Listen, you can say it. Even devils say that. But listen, Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord meaning supreme authority. Owner. Disposal of everything that I owe. Everything that I have. He's the Lord of my life. Jesus Lord of my life. Jesus, Lord of everything that I have. You're the Lord. See, that's a person that can say Jesus Christ. Say to me, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Now notice, what are you saying? You're saying Jesus, the anointed one. But now when you say Jesus, the anointed one, as Lord, you're saying he owns all my life. He owns all my life. Everything about me. Everything I do. I breathe and, and live Jesus. He's in me. He's, in, he's my Lord. So it means he's my Lord. See, see, you see what I'm saying? Now notice this. That means he has to be Lord in your walk every day. From this moment on, this, year, this beginning of the month of Elul, let him be Lord. You tell these dumb idols, dumb idols, you're not going to stand bigger than my Jesus because you are not worthy to be in front of me. Come on, you got to get rid of these things, whatever it may be. Listen, you can have anything that, that stands in front of Jesus can be a dumb idol. Now notice this. Listen, listen what I'm saying. It'll be, he calls it a dumb idol. It doesn't speak. It doesn't talk to you. It doesn't heal. It doesn't encourage you. Come on, church. When, 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 when the girls go get their nails and they have that big old dumb fat idol there, they have a, an orange, they have a banana, they have food. That dumb idol is never going to eat that thing. Come on, church. You might just eat the, get that apple and, and eat it yourself. You see, that dumb idol, that's what it is. It's a dumb idol. And there are people worshiping that dumb idol. Now notice this. That's no difference than a person that believes in Jesus but has never made him Lord. That, has, they, that puts them in that same category as having a dumb idol. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Notice this. We have to understand this. I want you to see this. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. When you discern who you are in the body of Jesus Christ, listen, church, when you discern who you are in the body of Christ, your gifts start working. The gifts of the Holy Spirit start working. When you discern yourself. But if you're not discerning yourself, you're not going to move further in the gifts of God. I don't care how much you try to be a, 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 a church attender, but if you don't have the discernment of, uh, of discerning the body or being part of the body, you're not going to move forward in the gift. There's people that will be 30, 40, 50 in church and they will not have a discernment of who they are in the body. You see what I'm saying? That's why we have to have it. So in other words, there's gifts of the body. Listen to this. Verse 5. 
And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Listen, administrations, all it means is those gifts now start becoming administered in our walk. Administrations in our walk. Uh, you know, things start happening. W when we discern the body, Holy Spirit comes in the church and now starts administrating the moves of God. The things of the Holy Spirit as we discern the body. Holy Ghost starts working in the church. Oh, all of a sudden you feel the power of God. You feel electricity coming on you. People all of a sudden are feeling the glory. The cloud starts filling the house of God. You're drawn from the word of God. Pastors get revelation because you're drawn from the, from the word of God. And he's like saying, whoo, I got to rehear this because there's revelation coming that I never heard. Why? Because there's an anointing out of there. Administration. See, it's the Lord that will administer in the house. Listen to this. Listen to this right now. The Oasis Center Church belongs to Jesus. It is a church with a vision to do the mighty works of Jesus. Let me ask you something. Does the devil love the Oasis Center Church? So if the devil doesn't love the Oasis Church, will he send somebody in there to try to destroy the Oasis Center Church? Yes. And so what do we do? We have to discern. We have to let, allow the Lord to administer. Come on, church, amen. Administer the anointing so that he can move mighty. But if we're not discerning the Lord and we don't care to be in the house of God and our mind is in something else rather than things of God, then you're just inviting the devil to come in and your pastors are having warfare all by themselves, warring and warring and warring. And they're getting weaker and weaker. The devil knows what he's doing. If he can get your pastor weaker, he can destroy the Oasis Center Church. If he can get your pastor focused on people that are sleeping in church and doing other things in church or, or not coming to church, if he can get it, what's happening, the devil already knows what he's doing. Listen, if all of us discern yourselves in the body, Understand the devil's not going to use that on me today. I'm going to the house of God to worship Jesus. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to shout for joy. I'm going to build myself up. I'm telling this place, you might have worked 20 hours today, but you're going to worship the Lord. You're going to tell this place, you may have not taken a bath. You might have came straight from work. You're going to worship the Lord. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what we have to do. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Amen. And notice this. That means he administers. To the church. Jesus Christ administers to the church. Now notice what it says. In verse 6. And there are diversities of operations. But it's the same God with working and all. What is operations? Operations are. The giftings of God already moving. Not only for the administration. But now moving. Operating. Things are happening. You're now starting to interpret. What someone's tongues. Has been saying in the spirit. You're starting to discern. You're starting to have visions and dreams. You're starting to encourage one another. I saw this. I saw this in the thing of how. I saw the Lord high and lifted up as pastor was preaching. I saw the moving of God in our church. Oh, I saw the power of God. I felt the anointing so strong that my hair was standing up. What are you doing? The operations of the Holy Spirit are moving. But nothing's said sometimes. Nothing's said. Nothing's encouraged. No one's encouraging one another. No one's prophesying, no one's interpreting, no one's praying, no one's agreeing. Come on, church. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, church. You see what I'm saying? When I say no one, I'm speaking generally. Come on, church. Amen. Hallelujah. That means, that means uh, it, it, there's no agreement. There's no agreement. There's no agreement. I'm telling you, there's more agreement than a, in a Dallas football stadium. Come on, church. Can you say amen? There's more agreement in, in the pub down the road drinking alcohol. There's more agreement in there than in the house of God. We come to the house of God and you're saying, we say, feed me, pastor, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. And you go home and you forget about the things of God we forget about the things of God and then we say oh, I gotta go to church again okay well, see what saying? That, this is the spirit of the Lord that he's telling us wake up to the the month of Elul wake up to the month of Elul wake up shake yourself come on you have to shake yourself I remember my mama my mama used to hang clothes in the clothesline and we, we still hang clothes in the clothesline I love a, a real nice press clothes out in the a clothes hanger hallelujah amen but I remember my mom she would hang them and they would just be flowing in the air, flowing in the air every now and then. She'll she'll get she'll get out there and raise that thing up, and it'll flow. The things are flowing, and I remember I'd be running out there and just be running through all the sheets, running all the sheets, running all the sheets. I didn't care if it got dirty, but I was just running through there. What was going What was going on? I was just dreaming that I was in the clouds, dreaming I was in the clouds. Come on, church. I think we need to do that in the house of God. We need to start believing that we're with God. 
I see God high and lifted up. I see God standing behind pastor as he's speaking. I see Jesus touching Brother Bo. I see Jesus touching uh, Brother So-and-so. Come on, church. We need to do these things. We've got we to gotta have a high expectation rather than come to the house of God. Well, is it time? Is it time? Is it? I know. I know what happens. I see. I see your faces. I know your faces. I know when you're here, when you're 100 miles away. I know when you're loving God and you're not. I know when you're really agreeing and you don't. Come on, church. Amen. But let me tell you something. There's more uh, percentage of people that are not here than right now in the church. Then I'm talking about in services. Because see, this is what we have to do. This is serious, church. We have to wake up to Allah. Say with me, amen. amen. Come on, we got to wake up to the Allah. We got to wake up. Lord, listen. Lord, if I'm the one that's hindering the worship, then I'm going to set myself right now in Jesus' name. I'm going to worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be the only person that is left to follow in the power of God. Amen. But you have to realize there's probably other people. So there's operations. Now I want you to see something here. In verse 7, this is what I want to show you. But the manifestation of the Spirit, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. To profit with all. To profit with all. Come on, church, amen. Profit with all. Profit with all. When the Spirit of God moves in the church, then you profit from that. When you come to the house of God with the heart to worship and to draw from his presence and to allow God to administer, to have diversities of gifts in the house of God, then you profit. It could be the thing that is holding you from increasing in the natural is your lack of allowing the spirit to profit you. It could be why things are not working in your way, why things are hindering your walk. Why there's division, why there's a strife, why is there separation, why there's so many things. It could be that church. This is serious business, church. Now, I know if you're in this house and you say, well, Pastor, you know everything about us. Listen, I know that, but there's many more that are in the same condition you are. You're not the only one. You're not the only one in the whole world that God placed a red paint button on you and said, okay, you're the one that's out of order. No, there are other people in the house of God that are Christians. I'll tell you what, let me tell you something. There is a high percentage of Christians that are not Christians in the house of God. There's a highest percentage. There's people that are not. And that's why they turn to fables. That's why their worships are turned into a, an open arena of show business. That's why pastors are tired of, of that. So they want to give them what they appease. And, and they want to have shows. And they want to have lights. And they want to have everybody dancing. And, and people are, it's all fleshly. It's all flesh. It's all flesh. It's all flesh. It's all flesh. And nobody profits. But when we come to the house like God, like tonight, and the Lord is literally shaking our rug, getting the dust out of our rug, that's profiting you right now. That's profiting you. If you'll say, I agree, Pastor, I receive that. Everyone needs to say, Father, I, I repent. I repent. That's me too. That's me. I repent. If you will do that, you allow the Spirit of God to start profiting in your life. But the moment you start pushing away from the Word and only want the Word when things are going hard and when things are going well, you forget the Word. Listen, that's a danger. I know people, I, I know I've been pastoring for many years. I told Christine, I told Christine, how many years have we been in ministry, full-time ministry? We've been in full-time ministry almost 30 years, full-time ministry, doing the work of the Lord, doing the work of the Lord, 30 years. I've been around, I've been, I've been, I've, I've rode horses, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm physical, I'm spiritually, I know what I'm saying, I know what I'm saying. There are a lot of Christians that don't want to move forward, and I've seen them, I've seen them, I've seen them in life. Things happen in people's lives because the devil beats them if they will only say, I want the allure. This season of Elio to, to examine my life. Now, two things in Elio is introspect. You introspect where the word is right now in your life. Introspect where you are with Jesus. Introspect. I'm telling you, I'm speaking clearly to you. Introspect where you are. I want you to examine yourself where you are in the body. In this case, the body of Jesus Christ in the Oasis Center Church. Where are you? 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 Examine yourself where you are. Come on, church. Examine, introspect, put the, put the light on you. Don't judge Pastor Christine or someone else. You judge yourself. You just get the word of God. Say, Father, I'm going to be in some business. I'm going to allow the word to examine me. Where am I in this? Do, do, am, do, 
do I have that issue? Do, do, is, there, is there an issue in me? Most likely there is. If the Holy Spirit speaking to us about it, yeah. Come on, church, amen. Listen to this. I want you to think about something right now. The purpose of Eliyahu is so that you can introspect, see your heart, and also see how you've been living. Now notice this. According to the Jewish calendar, the, we got 40 days. They, they're, they're having 40 days before the new year comes in. That's like our December. Right now is our, like, our, like our December. December the 1st. Because we know January is coming, 2018 is coming. So that's to them what they are. So in other words, they're looking... At the whole year of 2017, how were they? Now, today, Christy and I were looking back and saying, you know what, Lord? Wow, 17. But Lord, I thank you that we stood and stood and stood and stood. Oh, the devil wanted us to give up, but we stood. Oh, the devil wanted us to close the doors, but we stood. Oh, the devil this, the devil that. The devil. Oh, but Lord, you, we're standing, we're standing, we're standing, we're standing. And listen, that means... I'm looking forward to the next year in the things of God. Come on, church. I'm not going to go another year with people of God not discerning where they are in the body of Christ. I'm not going to go another year without them discerning where they are, trying to figure out if, if well, you know, I just don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know if I, I just, I did it, did it, no, no, no. You have to know that you know that you know that you know that you know that this is the body of Christ and we discern the body of Christ. Can you say amen, church? Come on, church, amen. Come on, let's stand up. Hallelujah, amen. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. We discern the body. We discern the body. Hallelujah. Say with me, I discern the body. I discern the body of Jesus. Come on. I discern the body of Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. Listen, discern, discern yourselves. Discern yourselves more in the body. Come on, church, amen. Discern yourselves where you are now. Discern yourselves. Put the light of the word of God. Uh, uh, you know, listen, listen. Uh, where you are in this house today, are you listening? Are you listening to the word of God? Are you listening to the people of God that he's placed over you? Are you listening to your pastors? Are you just, you're just faking it? Are you really praying for the house of God? Are you really believing to move higher into a higher realm with God? Come on, church. Are you, come on, church. Come on, church. Are you believing to move higher in the realm of God? Oh, come on, church. Amen. This is no living room church no longer. This is a house of God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. We come to the place of God. We come to worship Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We come to you, Father. And Father, we, like the Jewish people, Lord, examine ourselves.